Hey everybody, this is Mr. Ainsworth and we are going to talk about money today and we're going to learn how money gets compounded or grows over a period of time, whether it's compounded annually, compounded quarterly, monthly or daily. So we're going to go over the four different methods. Oh, there are five there. You can also compound it continuously here, but we went over the first four methods here and we're going to review each one one at a time and see how money gets compounded or grows okay so get your calculator ready because these are definitely calculator examples and let's go through the basics all right so let's see here come on computer respond okay so what we have here in the first one method one is we're going to compound annually first suppose we have invest eight thousand dollars eight thousand dollars in an account that pays an annual interest rate of twelve percent okay so obviously we are doing it annually right and it's an interest rate of twelve percent so we got to calculate uh, the growth rate from that so w where it's compounded annually and then we got to figure out the amount we have to after year one year two year three and then after n years and then after we figure out our explicit function we'll figure out after 45 years and we'll predict in the future how much we'll have if we have an eight thousand dollar initial investment okay so we start off with piece of zero at eight thousand bucks okay that is your initial investment okay you put that in the bank and let it ride and see what happens at 12 percent interest rate annually so what we need to do is calculate the growth rate so the growth rate on this is equal to 100 percent plus the 12 percent every year all right now that's 1 plus 0.12 or 1.12. 1 100% 1 as a decimal is 1 and 12% as a decimal is 0.12. You just you know you just shift the decimal two places left on each case. Or you can add 100 plus 12 and you get 112%. Oops, right there 112% and then when you convert it to decimal you shift it two places left and you get 1.12. I mean, you can even check it on your calculator. You take 112 divided by 100, because it's always per 100, and you get 1.12. Pretty obvious. Okay, so there's our growth rate. So what we need to do is take our 8,000 bucks, and we got to multiply by 1.12 to get to the amount that we have after year one. So this is after year one. That's what piece of one stands for, the amount you have after year one. Now, and obviously, it's more than 8,000, right? But how much is it? So enter in 8,000 in your calculator and work with me. Remember, this is not a uh, oh a watching exercise. This is participatory. So if you're watching this video at home or somewhere, then get out your calculator and pause and play through the video and work with me because you're not going to learn much by just watching me. You're going to learn by doing. Trust me on that. All right, so input 8,000, multiply by 1.12, which is 112%, and notice you get more than what you started with. You get $960 more. Okay, that's called the interest accrued after one year. So you have right here, you have 8,000. Let me bring the number back, 960 bucks. Okay, that's after one year. Well, you let it write another year, and so you got 112% of it again on the following year. Because remember, when you compound annually, the interest gets paid at the end of each year. That's what annually means. Interest is paid all right, at the end of one year. There we go. Okay, that's what compound annually means. And then every year, your the amount that you have in the bank grows. It gets compounded. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. All right. So now we take uh, our previous amount right here is eighty and nine and sixty. Okay, and you multiply it by one point one two, which is one hundred twelve percent. Make sure you type in the right numbers. I just caught my mistake right there. All right, and you get ten thousand thirty five dollars and twenty cents. Okay, so ten thousand dollars and ten thousand thirty five dollars and twenty cents okay so it's growing all right and and we're looking good okay we got to get third year here so let's multiply it by another 1.12 here times now what's cool about the ti84 is that once you do anything twice it remembers the process and all you do is press the enter button look at that and you can get as many years as you want just by clicking the enter button. Now we're up to $11,239. So $11,239 and 42 cents. You got to round to the nearest hundredth because there's 100 pennies per dollar. 
So since the four, you know, it's under five, you got to keep it as 42 cents. So you round to 42 cents, and that's after year three. So after two years, you have, this is a two, $10,035.20. After three years, well, we have $11,239.42. So in general here, what you have to understand is that in general, let me write the explicit function in general. P sub n is always equal to P sub 0 times r to the nth power for any geometric series where you keep on multiplying by what's called a constant ratio here. Okay, or a common ratio. Constant because it's the same. This is your common ratio or the, what's called the growth factor. Okay, the growth rate right there. And that's r. r equals that. Well, so you have, uh, in this case, your explicit function right here is your uh, initial amount, which is 8,000. Oops, excuse me, 8,000. All right, times your growth rate, 1.12, to the nth power. This is called the explicit function. This is what's used to answer this question right here. If you're going to predict in the future what you're going to have, well, you need to know how it grows, right? And this is how it grows every month, or excuse me, every year, where n equals number of years. Why? Because it's annually, right? We're compounding annually. So we're doing this after year year one, year two, and year three. So this right here is number of years. So P sub 3 stands for the amount that you have after three years, P sub 2 after two years, and so on. Okay, this 1.12 or 112%, that's your growth rate. So the question is, how many, uh, how much money will you have after 45 years? So when n equals 45, p sub 45 would be equal to 8,000 times 1.12 to the 45th power. So what is that? Well, I don't know. Let's figure it out. So 8,000 times quantity 1.12 or 112% raised to the 45 power, because we're doing this over 45 years. I just caught another mistake I made. So you got to make sure you press the right buttons here. And you have quite a bit money here. You have, let me see, 1,311,000. Uh, $900.83. That's if you invest eight thousand dollars and let it rest without touching it okay which is not enough for retirement here guys you need at least probably two million by the time you get to 50 I mean 65 you're gonna need way more than this okay guys you're probably gonna need like four million because there's there's something called inflation all right and things get more expensive over time so you have to save for the future okay now better than compounding only is called compounding quarterly and quarterly means every three months okay now there are four quarters per year keep that in mind that's what quarter means one-fourth so there are four quarters per year that's an important thing to know all right so we're gonna take eight thousand bucks and given an annual interest rate of 12 percent we got to compound quarterly so now every three months they stop and put the interest in so instead of every year they do it every three months or every quarter ah so here we go. We're going to start off with $8,000. All right. And then after the first quarter here, uh, you know, how much do we have? So what we need to do is figure out our growth rate. To do that, we got to figure out our quarterly interest rate. Okay. So let's do the quarterly interest rate first. So quarterly rate. All right. There's four quarters per year, right? So you take 12%. All right. Divided by four, which is 3%. There you go. This is your quarterly rate. So after every three months or every quarter, they put 3% interest in your account, 3% of what you start with. Your growth rate, well, that's different. So your growth rate, R, okay, R is equal to 100% plus your 3%. That's 1 plus 0 0.03, or R is equal to 1.03. Remember, 103% is just 1.03. Okay, so here we go. We got to multiply it by 1.03 every time. So now clear your calculator. 
and get ready. Okay, so we got 8,000, all right, times 1.03. And then, okay, you have, after three months or one quarter, you have 8,240. So $8,240. Now, don't worry about it. It's smaller than this one here, okay? Because you got to remember, piece of one over here means after one year. Here, this is after the first quarter or only three months. So there are two different time periods going on here. Keep that in mind. After the second quarter or after six months, all right, how much money do we have? Well, I don't know. We have to multiply it by 1.03. So you go times 1.03. You hit equals. So you have $8,487.20. So 8487 and 20 cents. Now, to get the third quarter or... Uh, you know, after nine months, this is third quarter now. Three times three is nine, nine months. Uh, you just hit the enter button because remember, it, it remembers the process, right? So now you have 87.41 and 82 cents. So 87.41 and 82 cents. Okay, that's after nine months you have that much money. Now, in general, you have $8,000 times your growth rate. And remember, this is your growth rate now. This is the important number here. That's what goes here. All right, times 1.03. It's always 1 plus the interest rate or the periodic interest rate, which happens to be 3% in this case, to the nth power. Or n is not, it's not years like in the previous case. It's number of quarters. Number of quarters. Okay, I'm talking about three-month periods. That's why I had to say in the very beginning when I first started this lesson, I had to say uh, I, I called in time periods because, you know, it could be years, three-month periods, one-month periods, days, you know, it could, be, it could be anything. It all depends on what you're doing, right? You got to look at the context of the problem. Okay, and now what we do is we use this. Okay, so here we go. How many uh, quarters are there in 45 years? So we got to calculate N first. So there's four quarters per year, so 45 times 4, what is that? Well, 45 times 4, how about 45 times 4, I better enter the right numbers in. Still haven't done it right. 45 times 4, okay. Now I got it right. You got to enter the right information. Calculators are great, but if you don't put the right numbers in, you're not going to get the right answers. So you got 180 here. There's 180 quarters. All right in 45 years. So you got to find piece of 180. So that's 8,000 times 1.03 to the 180 power. So here we go. And it should be better than the previous one. Because the more times you compound it, the better situation you have. So it better be it better beat our previous value here. Okay? And it does. 163, no, 1,636,000, 1,636,000, uh, $26.88. Okay, so this is better, all right? You have more money. If you compound it quarterly, compared to annually, you have more money. Quite a bit, by the, by, uh, by the way, over 300 grand more. So if you care about money, you're going to compound it better. Okay, now let's do a monthly and let's see what happens. We're going to start off with $8,000 here, same thing, but this time we got to calculate the monthly interest rate. So my periodic monthly interest rate, what is that? Well, it's 12% divided by 12, right? So 12% divided by 12 equals 1% monthly. That's my monthly interest rate. That tells me that my growth rate, let me put that R, is the growth rate. Let me label it. Growth rate here. R is equal to 100% plus the 1% or 1 plus 0 0.01 or 1.01. If that doesn't make sense, well, add the percentages. 101%. Shift the decimal two places over, you get 1.01. .01. Okay, so that's what I multiply here. 1.01. .01. Here we go. 
every month. So this app represents after the first month now. Okay, so what is 8,000 times 1.01? .01? So enter in. Let's clear it out. Let's start over. So 8,000 times 1.01. .01. That's 8,080. So I got 80 bucks interest right there after one month. After the second month, what do we have? Well, you got to multiply it by 1.01. .01. So times 1.01. .01. And you get 81.60 and 80 cents. So 81.60 and 80 cents. One more time, you got to multiply it by 1.01. .01. .01. So just hit the enter button because remember the calculator remembers your process, right? And you get 82.42. And let's see, and 41 cents. Okay, so in general, you have $8,000 times your growth rate, which is right here. So it's 1.01 .01 to the nth power, where n is number of months now. Got to keep that in mind. Okay, so to answer this question, 45 years, you got to figure out how many months there are in 45 years. So n equals 45 times 12 because there's 12 months per year. So 45 times 12, that's 540. So there's 540 months during that time. So I got to find piece of 540. So you take 8,000 times 1.01 1 .01 to the 540 power and see what you get. And you should get a pretty good sized number. So let's take 8,000 all right, times 1.01, .01, raise it to the 540 power. Oh, and you get a bigger number than before. You get 1,724,000. Oh, $1,775,044. Okay, and you'll notice that it's a little bit more than before, right? We have 1.6 million up here. So first we have 1.3 million, then 1.6 million. Here you get 1.7 million. So it's increasing. It's getting better and better and better if you compound it more and more and more or more frequently, okay? Because compounding monthly is better than compounding quarterly, which is better than compound annually. All right, so let's do the best method. Let's compound daily, okay? Because monthly is only 12 times per year. Daily, well, that's 365 times a year, right? Because you know there's 365 days a year. So we're going to compound it 365 times, which means after each day, we put the bank puts the interest in. So uh, if you start off with $8,000, your daily interest rate, what is that? So it's, uh, it's whatever 12% is divided by 365, right? All right, your growth rate is 100% plus that. But you got to convert these to a decimal before you start multiplying this guy. So it's 1 plus 0.12 divided by 365. Now you might, might want to stop and say, hey, Ainsworth, what in the world are you doing here? Why do you leave it like that? Well, if you look at 12 divided by 365, you'll notice that it's a repeat, not a non-repeating, non-ending decimal. And the deal is that you can't round this. You can't take the first two digits, three digits, four digits, or even five, or even six, because if you do, you're, you're, you're not going to get a close result to the actual. The more you round, the more error you have. And so we want to use all the digits. So we have to use this entire number here. So we don't want to round. Don't round. All right, that'd be a no-no, okay? So you just take your daily interest rate, which is whatever the annual is, which is 12%, divided by 365, because there's that many days a year, add it to 100%, convert to decimal, which means you shift to both decimals, both percentages, two places left, or the decimals of the percentages, two places left. And then you use that as your conversion factor. So I need to multiply, and this is R, by the way. This is my growth rate right here. This is my magical number. I need to multiply by quantity 1 plus 0 0.12 divided by 365. All right, so let's do that. So here we go. Let's clear it out. Start off with 8,000. That's the last one we have to do. So 
uh, you want to multiply it, quantity, use parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.0, excuse me, 0.12, all right, divided by 365. N quantity and raise it to, no, you don't want to raise it to anything. Uh, you just want to hit the enter button. That's what you want to do. And notice that, you know, it's not much bigger than 8,000 when you started with because this is after one day, guys. You got to remember that. Not after one month, after one quarter, or, or after one year. This is after one day. So the bank only added $2.63 to your account. So that's okay, though. I mean, that's that's still good, right? So $8,002.63. Let me verify that. $8,002.63. Okay, I wrote it down right. Okay, so we earned $2.63 on the first day. So this is day one, or first day. After the second day, that's piece of two. We had to multiply it by 1 plus 0.12 divided by 365. So we go times quantity 1 plus 0.12 divided by 365. You just type it in directly, hit the enter button, and you get $8,005.26. So $8,005.26. And one more time, you want to multiply by 1 plus 0.12 divided by 365. So you just hit the enter button again because remember the calculator remembers the process. So it takes your previous answer, just keeps on multiplying by the same thing. And now we have $8,007.89. Okay, so in general, we take 8,000 times our, our growth rate, 1 plus 0.12 divided by 365 to the nth power, where n now is number of days that has gone by. Oops, number of days. Sorry, guys. So a number of days right here. All right, and then we use that to answer this question. How much money do we have in 50, 45 years? So the first thing we need to do is calculate how many days have gone by. So 45 times 365. That's a big number. So 45 times 365. Let me try that again. 45 times 365. you got to press the right buttons. Jeez, come on, Ainsworth. So you get 1,600, days. So 1,600, days. That's how many days there are in 45 years. So you got to find piece of 16... 425, and that's found by taking 8,000, multiply it by 1 plus 0 0.12, divided by 365, and raise it to this 16,425 power. It should be bigger than 1.7 million. So here we go. This is my last calculation. So times 1 plus 0 0.12, divided by 365, and raise it to the 16,000. 425 power. Hey! And look, it's bigger than this right here. All right? And uh, you'll be happy that it is because this is better uh, than compounding monthly. Compounding daily means you, you, you get interest on a daily basis as, a, as opposed to a per month basis. So 1769. So 1769. 680 and 8 cents. Okay, so it's bigger. This is your best way to invest. This is the best method so far. Oops, got to spell it right. Let me try that again. Best method. There you go. Why? Because you get the most money. So you want to invest it, guys. If you had a choice, you want to invest it and have it compound daily versus all four of these. Uh, you, want to, you want to invest your money uh, where it's compounded daily versus quarterly, annually, or monthly because this is the best. Okay? And you can tell. Uh, just look at all your results here. Compare your numbers. Okay, 1.3 million, 1.6 million, 1.7 million, or 1.72 million, and here 1.77 million, if I round. Okay, just check your answers right here. You can check. 
Now, what you guys need to do is the back side. Oh, yeah, you got to do it again, but this time on your own without me. So check your answers for the these next four problems with me in class, okay? Now, remember, this is a video, right? So what you can do if you need to hear it again is you can listen to me again if you need to, okay? This is a video, so you can pause, play, rewind, and check out all the results and listen to it again if you need to on your own okay that's up to you just work hard give me your best and i'll see you in my next lesson this is mr ainsworth it's all about money tonight i'll see you later bye bye